Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here. Guys, Stacy with me. Shalom. And we're here on the 14th day of the first month, which is what? This is Passover. Passover, which means that part of the things we'll be doing today is removing the leavening from our house, getting ready for the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Mm-hmm. Well, in this video, it's going to be a little bit of a rushed video as we try to get this information out. Well, in this video, we're going to be looking at a few verses that show that it is possible that the Feast of Unleavened Bread has nothing to do with bread or leavening. Okay, I'm interested. Yeah, and like I said, I am rushing this class and I worked on it all day yesterday, but most of my time was spent trying to figure out, okay, well, what is it? What is unleavened bread? Mm -hmm. Meditating on it. And I didn't come up with a conclusion. Okay. But because we are so close to the festival, I wanted to go ahead and put this information out kind of as a seed. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of very intelligent, very smart viewers watching this channel. And some of those guys will be able to pick up on this seed and then be able to get some information on it from themselves. Plant it and then let it uh, come to a harvest. Yeah, see if it's anything to it. I mm -hmm. mean, this is a big deal. This is the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And like I said, in this video, I'm going to show verses that shows that the Feast of Unleavened Bread has nothing to do with bread or leaven. Okay. All right. Let's, <laughs> all right. let's go at it. All right. First of all, we're going to look in Leviticus 23 and verse 6. This is where we get the statute concerning the Feast of Unleavened Bread. If you would read that. And on the 15th day of the same month is the Feast of Unleavened Bread unto the Lord. Seven days you must eat unleavened bread. Okay, so there is the statute or right. the commandment, as someone would call it. Now, when we come to the Strong's over here at BibleHub.com, we can break down that verse a little bit, looking at the Hebrew. Mm -hmm. And over here we see that unleavened bread is Strong's number 4682. Right. We click on it and it says unleavened bread or cake. Mm -hmm. Now, let's pause here to let that sink in. That is saying that this matzah 4682 is unleavened bread or cake. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, let's go to Exodus chapter 29 and verse 2. Mm -hmm. you read that. And unleavened bread and cakes unleavened tempered with oil and wafers unleavened anointed with oil of wheat and flour shall thou make them. Now, I chose this verse because it's talking about cakes and it's talking about wafers and it's also talking about unleavened bread. Right. But watch what happens when we look at the interlinear Bible. And let me read it since we have to read it backwards. It says, and bread unleavened and cakes unleavened mixed with oil and wafers unleavened you see that i see that does anything look strange to you nothing jumping out it seems to me to just be saying unleavened bread cakes and unleavened wafers yeah but look at this part right here where it's talking about bread here in the first word this is strong's number 3899 the word looks like lechema and means bread or food or something like that. Mm -hmm. But then look right here where it has unleavened beside it, mm -hmm. which is 4682. Right. And it also includes the word bread. Mm -hmm. And you look back over here at Leviticus 23 and they say it means unleavened bread. Right. So if this word right here means unleavened bread or cakes, mm -hmm. let me read that. By substituting that in okay in its place okay so what this would say is and the bread unleavened bread and cakes and cakes unleavened bread and cakes mixed with oil and wafers unleavened bread and cakes so you're saying it's a choice I'm saying that they doubled it up they got the word bread here Right. And they got the word bread here. Right. So they're saying the word twice. Right. So in other words, this word right here, 4682, is not bread at all. The bread is right here. Right. So what is this? The matzah? 
Yeah, what is yeah, what is this? If this is if this is bread, thirty eight ninety nine, then what is this? Could it just be the leaven part? Well, let's look at our next verse here. This is the first time we see the word unleavened bread over in Exodus chapter twelve. If you would read verse fifteen. Seven days shall ye eat unleavened bread. Even the first day you shall put away leaven out of your houses. For whosoever eateth leavened bread from the first day unto the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off from Israel. Now, when we look at the interlinear Bible, we see the word unleavened bread here, 4682. And then we see the word leaven over here, 7603. Right. Notice how they're not close to the same word at all. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, look down here. We see the word leavened bread, mm -hmm. which should be the opposite of unleavened bread. Right. But look, it's 2557. Mm. And it's Hamas. And it's nothing like unleavened bread, what we saw over here. Yeah, that's kind of confusing. So you have three leavenings. Right. And none of them are spelled the same. Right. None of them are the same word. Mm hmm. So are you saying that if the word is not dealing with leaven, then there's another meaning to it? Well, yeah, because why would it double up the words right. if you're saying bread here mm -hmm. and this is unleavened bread? Then what is this? Right. I'm just unleavened. And here's your bread part. Well, if we come over here to Exodus 12. We see unleavened bread here, but then we see leavened down here. Right. So it's proven that these words are not related. Right. The feast of unleavened bread has nothing to do with bread or leaven. <laughs> okay. This video is brought to you by the Celestial Clock Calendar, the official timepiece of the 144,000. Get your Celestial Clock Calendar at coachinafight.shop or follow the links in the description below. Matter of fact, let's look a little bit closer. We're here looking at the word matzah, matzah, but we've already proven that it's not unleavened bread. It's no le there's no leavening associated with it and there's no bread or cakes associated with it. Right. But look, there are other choices that were given, like strife and contention. Mm -hmm. That reminds me of what the Messiah told them over there in Matthew chapter 16, mm -hmm. when he was telling them to avoid the leavening of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Right. So here is another clue that it has nothing to do with bread or leavening, but it's something else completely, totally different. Hmm. Okay. It could also have been talking about a place here. What you have to do is pay attention to the original word and how it's the same word being used, same three letters being used. Okay like you see drain or drain out. You was um you gave me this question to um to meditate on yesterday um about the leaven and the unleavened and as I was able to do sort of a brief study, I saw something that said that masa uh meant hurry. So could that be one of the um definitions of it? A feast of hurry, a feast of rush or something like that? Well, that is what we're talking about. What is this word? Mm -hmm. Now, let's look a little bit closer at this word leaven here. 7603. Notice these three letters. It could also mean to remain or be left over. Mm -hmm. Rest, residue or remnant. Rest, remainder. But it could also mean flesh. So back here in verse 15, when it says the first day you shall put away the leaven, it could be saying you should put away the flesh, which is what we have to do on the morning, mm. the first morning of unleavened bread. We burn the rest of the flesh and the bones and the stuff from the Passover all has to be burned. So is that what it's saying on the first day you put away the flesh? That's what we're talking about here, because one thing is clear is that this leaven could mean something else, something other than this leaven down here, which is twenty five fifty seven. 
Right. That which is leavened. So once again, this word could have been at the discretion of the translator. Like we talked about in our class, they could have used 2556, which is to be sour or leavened. Or they could have went to 2558, which is vinegar. Hmm. I often wonder why a feast um, would be centered around bread that did not rise. Um, what was so important about that. Um, but then when the Messiah said to put away the leaven, um, you know, I thought that those two connected. Maybe. We are asking questions in this video. We have more questions than we have answers. But when I saw the word vinegar, it reminded me of the vow of the Nazarite. Mm -hmm. that we read about over in Numbers chapter 6. Right. So was part of this plan that the people would go through a week-long abstention from vinegar? Hmm. Thing about it, while I was working on this video yesterday, I actually received a comment from Pete talking about this. Okay. He's talking about Exodus chapter 12 and verse 19, where instead of saying leaven, it says fermented in the Young's literal translation. Mm-hmm. So this word leaven here, what we're told to remove from our house, could very well be talking about anything fermented, like vinegar. Yeah, which is um, what happens with the bread when the sugar and the yeast mix together. Oh, that's part of fermentation? Right. But that's the kind of questions we're asking here. So in Exodus chapter 12 and verse 15, we could be told to remove the flesh instead of removing the leavening. That's mm -hmm. Strong's number 7603. And then we could be told not to have any fermented foods in our house, like we see down in 2557, mm -hmm. as this festival that we're supposed to be partaking in, 4682. So inside of this new information, um, it still goes back to where the fermented or leaven is still talking about um, the doctrines of of man. Is that is that what it's really talking about? Well, that's what the Messiah made us understand. Mm -hmm. Is that them back there with Moses? Maybe they didn't understand. Maybe they didn't get it right. Right. Because the Messiah didn't come in talking about bread at all and anything like that. He came in talking about Pharisees and Sadducees. Right. So. Maybe there was some type of misunderstanding. I don't know. But looking at these verses with these double words, none of them seem to be related. It makes me believe that there's something else. There's something that we could be missing. Right. And, of course, we'll still take out the bread on this holiday, but we'll probably take the vinegar out of the house and make sure we have no wine in the house or mm -hmm. anything else firm in it during this week. Because I'm not sure that the Feast of Unleavened Bread has anything to do with with bread mm -hmm. so I have a question and it might be totally out in left field or it might even be related so would this possibly be one of the reasons that the Messiah uh, did not partake in the wine at the supper it could be the reason why the Messiah seemed to be doing things differently because he understood what we were supposed to be doing Whereas the Sadducees and the Pharisees, even the disciples at the time, really didn't know what they were supposed to be doing. Right. So anything he came in and did that would appear to have been strange right. would have been him fulfilling the law. Mm -hmm. You know, getting rid of the traditions and the oral law and all of that other misunderstandings that they had and actually getting the people back to doing what it was that we are supposed to be doing. Yeah, and case in point is when they were saying uh, about him not washing his hands, um, there was always a deeper meaning as to why he didn't do things. Yeah, and I'm putting some verses up here from the Third Testament of the Bible uh, for the sake of time. We was going to go through and read all of these and talk about them, but I don't know if we're going to be able to. Um, so I just posted them here for people to review as we focus in on what the Messiah did and his message from the Third Testament on what we are supposed to be doing in relationship to unleavened bread. 
And like I said, I just want to put this out. You know, I know there's a lot of smart viewers out there and hopefully, you know, some of them will actually dig into this and share what they find as well. So that next year or maybe next month, even during the second Feast of Unleavened Bread, we can actually have a better idea mm -hmm. of what it is exactly we are supposed to be doing. And another thing I was just thinking of, you know, when you said that we are supposed to put, you know, the flesh or could it be saying that we're supposed to put the flesh out of our house? Uh, my mind immediately went to, I guess, spiritual. Um, we're supposed yeah, to yeah. put carnality out of our temple and start thinking uh, more so spiritually, and especially in this new era that we're into. Yeah, that's, that's a good thought. But you guys let us know what you think down in the comment section. Uh, if you decide to do any of this study, try to figure out what this feast day is really supposed to be all about. Like I said, it appears it has nothing to do with bread or leavening, but it's still serious nonetheless. Um, let us know down in the comment section. Please share what you find. That's kind of how we work around here where we do all we can do and then we bring it to the table and let other smart people help us to get an understanding so we all know in the end but we are going to be taking it out right yeah we're going to take out the bread <laughs> yeah we're going to take out the vinegar and the wine yeah. and, you know too that's gonna we're not trying to do less we're actually trying to do more as we try to get closer to what's actually right we don't mind taking extra stuff out of house or doing extra things well you always say to error on the side of caution yeah mm -hmm. so i just wanted to get others to come in and maybe Try to help figure out what is this? What is Masawada? What is Strong's number 4682? Because like I said, it's, it has nothing to do with bread and it has nothing to do with leavening, according to what we read here. Okay. And with that, we're going to say Shalawama. Shalawama.